What's up everybody, AJ from Knights of the Apex here, back in studio, been a little while. Um, at the time I'm filming this, I just got back from Total Archery Challenge Utah, hence the skin tone that matches the t-shirt. But uh, bear with me. Also, we just reached over a thousand followers, subscribers on YouTube, so thank you all for that. If you're not already, if you haven't already, uh, subscribe to the, the channel. Hit that little button down there, smash that bell icon, and uh, definitely be sure that you're following us on Instagram because that is for sure where I am most active. But anyway, with uh, no further ado, a review that is long overdue. The Spot Hog Fast Eddie is what we're going to be talking about today and all of the various models that it comes in. Now, uh, before we do, as I do with any product, Disclosures, I have zero affiliation with uh, SpotHog. I don't know anyone at the company. The extent of my uh, interaction with SpotHog has been when I call their customer service line for some information, uh, like before I did this video, uh, just for some clarification of some points. Uh, and they were really helpful. Anytime I've called SpotHog or anytime I've heard of anybody having to call SpotHog, they've always uh, had just absolutely excellent customer service uh, and that's something that, that goes a long way and I appreciate that. Uh, now, as far as the site itself, uh, I'm not going to, I'm gonna try my best to not get into the weeds on specifications regarding uh, kind of the stats and specs of the different models. You guys can look that up yourself on the, the website. So let's get into it. I'm going to go over uh, from tip to dovetail this site and uh, what I'm currently running, what I've run in the past, how it compares to uh, other models. And I'm also going to be going off of feedback that I've received from friends and guys that I, I trust and guys that are far bigger killers than I am in the industry uh, that run these sites that have uh, let me pick their brains on them. So this model is the Fast Eddie XL. Uh, I've had this site tower for two years. I just before Total Archery Challenge, swapped out my site housing for the brand new knock-on edition site housing. Now, the only real difference between the site housing that comes with the all of the Spot Hog sites and the knock-on edition one is going to be the color scheme. So you're gonna get a white uh, ring that's removable. It also has uh, multiple rings, uh, the, multi, the MRT, the multi-ring uh, technology ring, and that's just gonna be white and green as opposed to the yellow and green. Uh, I find that that little change in color is actually much easier to pick up and much easier for my eye to track and get acclimated to. Uh, the other, um, this isn't a change that, that Dudley implemented, but just this is a change for me is the pins are, uh, this is the double pin model and it, it, they are uh, 0.019 uh, diameter pins and the colors are actually green and red. I believe the standard site, and I could probably pull mine out right now, is green and then your second pin is yellow. Uh, that was an upgrade for me. So the, the reason I swapped out my uh, my stock scope housing for the knock-on one was, uh, one, I had dropped my bow on my site a number of times. Um, Spot hog sites are known for being extremely robust. Uh, that being said, I did manage to bend my sight bar right there. Um, you know, it, it fell out of a press a couple of times, uh, just hunting, I've fallen on it and tripped and things like that. Uh, it was operating perfectly fine. The real reason that I decided to swap it out for the knock-on edition was uh, I was previously shooting the .010 diameter pins and they were just frankly far too small for my eyes to pick up, especially in low light situations. So I, I went to the .019 diameter pins and uh, and I like them much better. Having shot them now um, at two different courses at Total Archery Challenge, uh, I found that I was just as if not more accurate even with the bigger pins uh, and I like the new color scheme. You also get uh, a replacement. Dudley gives you a new uh, bracket in case you're running a uh, new mounting bracket for the, the, um, the tower in case you're running a different uh, site housing and he also gives you a new green indicator uh, for your site tape because of course you know you can't have a knock-on addition anything and not have it be green. So uh, Nice little upgrades aesthetically. I do like it. I know it's small and it might be stupid, but it makes a really big difference. Um, moving on from that's that's about everything for the scope. You can put a uh, a light 
uh, one of those little screw on lights on there. Of course, you could also run like target systems like the Zebros. Um, I typically don't. Anyway, um, really like that new, that new, uh, the new scope that, that Dudley came out with. Um, big fan of the two pin design. Um, that it's something that I've run since I've been running, since I moved over to spot hogs. It's all I run was the two pin. Um, those two pins, they are fixed. So once you sight in, your second pin is going to be dependent on your bow's speed. Uh, so for my particular setup that I have right now, my first pin, if I'm set at 20, uh, there's actually two indicators here on the uh, on the elevation wheel, and that second indicator uh, lets me know that my second pin, if I'm, my first one's at 20, my second pin is right at 38, uh, 38 yards. I, the other thing that I really like about the two pin housing, and I know I'm spending a lot of time on the housing, but this really is probably the most important part and the thing that separates this sight uh, a lot is it's a very robust system. You heard me say that I bent my sight bar. That being said, it functioned fine. I didn't have any issues once I, I just re kind of zeroed for my second and third axis. Um, that site was bent for the last year and I had no problems shooting it accurately. Spot hog sites are known for being just bulletproof sites. The spot hogs are just, they're kind of, you could think of them as the ACOGs of the bow hunting world. Uh, they're not perfect, they've got their quirks, and we'll get into some of those uh, as we move through the site. But overall, they really are just a benchmark for um, high end sites. Uh, high-end archery sites. Guys that buy spot hogs and girls that buy spot hogs, they tend to hold on to them. And if you do decide to get rid of them, their resale value is just very, very good. Um, they are a little pricier. They run anywhere from 250 to, I think, depending on what kind of model you get, they're, they're in the 350 range um, if you start talking about the multi-pin uh, housings. But uh, they really do just hold up to everything. And their, their pins are extremely durable. For the money, um, you're hard pressed to find a better site out there. And I have checked out other sites like the Axel, the HHAs, uh, the Black Golds. Um, I don't know that there's one that is more durable, especially when it comes to the pins uh, and the overall construction. The, the whole site, the components, they are CNC machined. A lot, the hardware, a lot of it is oversized. Uh, I've had this, this same site for two years. I had a normal Fast Eddie before it and I have not stripped out a single Allen head uh, or screw on this site. And that's something that um, I can't say, and I know a lot of guys can't say for uh, other manufacturers. So just really, really great uh, design. Moving on, you have your second and third axis can actually be adjusted right here on uh, the towers themselves. It is a little clunky. Um, I get asked a lot how I do my second and third axis. Honestly, uh, I kind of ghetto rig it. Um, but I haven't had any reason to invest in a more expensive uh, sight leveling system. But all I do is I hang a string from the ceiling. I run it to almost the floor and have something at the bottom. Like uh, maybe I'll, I'll throw some um, weights at the bottom just so I make sure that that string is hanging level and is staying in the same place. And then I will simply uh, line up my second axis making sure that my post is lined up with that string. Uh, I'll adjust my second axis, I'll then come to full draw and I will trace that string from top to bottom and check my third axis that way. It works, it's free, I didn't lose a single arrow shooting both the knock-on and sick of courses of Total Archery Challenge last weekend. So, uh, you know, there are other ways to go about it, but that's a cheap, inexpensive, um, at-home way that has always worked for me. Moving on to the elevation wheel now, this is one of the things uh, that I did have, you know, you can tell how much I like these sites uh, because I did have Coda stickers made up just for, just to fit inside the, the Fast Eddie wheels. Um, the elevation wheel is something that, you know, it, it's good, it works, um, you know, it's very smooth. There's a little locking lever right here. Uh, you put it in towards the riser to lock it in place. You push it out um, to be able to adjust that wheel up and down. Uh, it's very smooth. I haven't had any hangups with it, having run these things for years now. My old uh, standard Fast Steady sight is actually on my buddy John's bow that I hunt with regularly, and he likewise has had zero issues with that sight as well. And that sight now is going on about four years, um, and it's you know it's taken a beating and it's still working just fine. Uh, the wheel itself is good. The the elevation, your tape goes on the wheel itself. That's one of the things 
I don't love about this site. I wish that they came up with a way to have kind of like a, a 45 degree indicator on the inside of the housing, only because when you're moving, when you're adjusting your elevation, when you if you if you hunt with a quiver on your bow, a lot of times that quiver is actually going to block your line of sight with your elevation wheel. Uh, and on this this um, XL version of the Fast Eddie with the dovetail, this knob actually partially obscures it depending on the angle as well. So you know it it is it does you know it does make for a low profile when you're in the stand facing an animal to just be able to turn that knob right here without you know creating a lot of movement but at the same time you could just as easily accomplish the same thing from right here and be able to view it from the inside um and you know you might not have that issue of the the site being the site tape being obscured just an idea something I, I was really hoping that you know they'd have an update to by now but they don't windage adjustments uh, there's a little lever right here that puts tension on the the windage adjustment right here and then you have micro clicks um, if you wanted to do more macro adjustments you could actually loosen this bolt right this allen head right here and you could move the entire bar in or out when it comes to sighting in these sites um, spot high gives you some directions as far as how to choose which wheel you're going to run um, but that doesn't really give you the most ideal kind of starting point what i found with these spot hog sites is uh, i will use the uh, anything with a screw for macro adjustments so anything larger than three inches at 20 yards uh, what i'll do is if i'm taking this thing right out of a package or let's say i just built up a new bow and I'm slapping this sight on a new bow, what I will do is uh, I will first adjust, uh, I'll do the the, um, the French tuning with a strip of tape going uh, horizontal on my target, going vertical on my target and one going horizontal. I will first tune my left to right. So again, anything bigger than say three inches, I will actually move my entire housing. Uh, and this is assuming your bow is tuned properly, right? But anything bigger than three inches, I will just move my entire housing left or right, uh, and then I will use the uh, the micro clicks to fine tune from there. Um, I might even use this honestly within an inch, uh, and then use the micro clicks from there. I try and save the micro clicks for when I'm shooting out past 20 yards, because sometimes you will notice that uh, you actually are pulling to the left or right at those further distances. So I, I try and save the micro clicks for there. But you do have ample adjustment left to right, even with those micro clicks. Um, but I'll start off with that in the center and I will, I will move the actual site itself until my left and right is good at 20. I will then work on my vertical, again, screws for macro adjustments, um, everything else for micro adjustments. So what I'll do is I'll make sure that my wheel is zeroed out so it's as high as it possibly can go. So right now this thing's as high as it possibly can go. I'll shoot it. I will remove these screws and actually move the entire housing up and down there's a number of holes right here on the tower um, that you can move the the site housing so I will use that to adjust it until again I'm within about three inches and then I will actually use the site wheel to zero in to 20 once I'm zeroed into 20 I'll put my calibration tape uh, all the spot hog sites come with uh, calibration tapes um, I'll put my calibration tape on there it tells you just put your first indicator here for 20 yards uh, and then I will walk it back to 60. Once you're sighted in at 60 it will tell you the indicator tape will the calibration tape will tell you uh, what sight tape you need to use for your bow setup uh, at all distances. Now it's a it, it's approximate estimation what I've found is especially at those further distances a lot of times uh, I have to check my zero again so sometimes like right now I'm shooting at 26 when I actually zeroed this bow it was telling me I needed to shoot a uh, 27 tape and I didn't realize that until I walked it back to 80 90 and 100 uh, I was hitting a little bit um, I was hitting I believe I was hitting a little bit low so I had to kick it up uh, a sight tape to get that elevation. Another thing and one of the advantages of uh, the dovetail, the XL model, uh, and the XL, that is what differentiates the XL from the standard uh, Fast Eddie model, if I hadn't said that before, before, is the fact that it has a dovetail mounting bracket 
as opposed to just a standard uh, bracket that just bolts onto the riser. Um, with the XL bracket, if you find your bes between sight tapes, what you can actually do is you can move, simply move the whole sight in or out one adjustment on the dovetail itself to get you closer to one sight tape or another. Um, simply moving this sight in or out, remember that this bow is going to be working on an arc when you're shooting those arrows, so um, that can help you fine tune uh, which tape you should be shooting. Once you do it once or twice, it's a very simple system to get down. It's not very complicated. Uh, and, and it becomes very intuitive, but it can definitely be a little awkward. I always recommend buying um, a second or third uh, little booklet of tapes. You can order them from Lancaster Archery or any of the other online uh, retailers that carry spot hogs. Uh, I want to say that they go for like five, six bucks, something like that. Um, so it's, you know, it's nothing crazy, but it's good to have some extra tapes because if let's say, you know, you start messing with your draw length, if you're playing with different arrow setups, you may have to um, change sight tapes. Another reason I like the XL model, the dovetail model of the sight is when I'm flying with my bow, what I will actually do is I will just completely remove my sight housing and this will ride in me, ride in me, wow, that's wrong. This will ride with me in carry-on. I'll throw this in my backpack. I know it's nice and safe. I keep it with all of my other um, my optics, like my binos, my rangefinder, things like that, my camera equipment, that all rides with me. I want to make sure I have hands on it at all times. The most common issue I've seen coming into camps or flying with bows or you know arriving at a total archery challenge is the sights. Just because of how they, a lot of them sit on these bows, they're very exposed and they end up getting dropped on. Um, and or the the bars get bent and that's not exclusive to spot hog that goes for every site um, the typically this is the weak point when you're flying this is the thing that's going to take the beating when it's in your bow case uh, it just is what it is so I avoid that I spent the extra money I got the dovetail model the XL model I remove it throw it in my backpack uh, and it rides with me um, if you're someone that you know you're never going to be flying with a bow, you want to save some weight, then definitely look at the standard model. As far as uh, other models out there, now uh, I kind of alluded to earlier that I was running the knock-on, or I, I mentioned earlier that I was running the knock-on scope. Dudley just before TAC did release um, a multi-pin version of the Spot Hog that he came out with, and a the double-pin version of the Spot Hog that he came out with. The changes that he made, the, the material changes aside from the color scheme, um, is all of the pins are going to be 0.019, which I found to be perfect. The color scheme definitely looks cooler. Um, you are supporting the knock-on brand by purchasing it, but also the sight tapes that Dudley sells exclusively, at least to my knowledge, I don't believe Spot Hog is selling these anywhere else and I haven't seen them anywhere else, but if you buy a knock-on edition Spot Hog sight, the sight tapes that Dudley sells actually go out to 120 yards. The standard spot hog sight tapes only go out to 100. That's really cool, especially if you're somebody that loves to practice at long distances, uh, loves to shoot total archery challenges. You can almost always count on at least one or two targets being past 100 yards, and it's really nice to have that additional, uh, those additional legs on your sight to be able to get out to those distances. Of course, assuming your bow and your setup allows you to even get to those distances, but it is nice to have. It's something that you know, now with events like Total Archery Challenge becoming more popular, becoming more mainstream, I hope that all site manufacturers start to take into consideration and start to include with their sites. Um, if you buy just the, the knock-on edition scopes, they do not come with the new tapes. So uh, I'll post a picture of what does come with them, um, but they don't come with the new tapes, unfortunately. Um, and uh, I should have actually asked him while I was at Total Archery Challenge uh, if he was going to plan on selling the, the tapes individually, but I forgot. Um, so that about covers setup, what I think about the site. Um, I, you know, if you're not sure, if you're looking at your first slider site, if you're looking at your first high end option and you're not sure what to pick up, Spot Hog sites are one of those things that I can recommend with absolutely no disclaimers. There's no perfect 
site that I found on the market. They all have their quirks. For the money, I think this particular setup, it runs right around 250, 275 right now. It may, may even be less on some websites. You're hard pressed to find a more robust, proven system than this for the money, especially when you're talking about the double pins, which I don't believe anybody else has right now. Um, when you start looking at multi-pin sites, you're adding more weight to the bow. I'm per personally not a big fan of like five pin sites. It's just, uh, you see in those scopes, those site housings, they're just uh, very big and heavy. Um, if you do decide to go with the multi-pin option, uh, just be sure that all of your hardware is tightened down nice and tight um, because I have heard of some people complaining, especially guys that run their dovetails all the way out. Uh, higher poundage bows, there's a lot of vibration being felt at the end of the, these sites. So uh, just make sure all of your hardware is tightened down. It might even be worth lock tightening some of those screws that don't need to move or be adjusted. Um, just something to be aware of. Uh, so yeah, if, if you were looking to pick one of these up, I would definitely recommend uh, the knock-on edition ones simply because of the sight tapes. I think the color scheme is better. It's easier to pick up with the eye, but you wouldn't be wrong to go with any of the fast eddy options out there. If the dovetail is something that uh, is beneficial to you, then you know definitely pick it up. If not, you know the standard one works great. Uh, it's actually easier to mount most quivers to the standard spot hog sights. Um, with this knob on here, it does come with another set screw, so you don't get the cool little nog with the nog. You don't get the cool little knob with the Spot Hog logo. It's just a set screw um, that, uh, and that does allow you to more easily mount uh, sights like uh, not sights um, quivers like the Tight Spot or other ones too here. Um, but some guys have commented that they've had issues mounting those uh, quiver brackets to the XL Edition Spot Hogs. Another spot hog site that isn't a fast eddy, but is another great option that's kind of a sleeper pick is the Born and Raised Edition. It's actually a Tommy hog, so it's not a fast eddy site. It has some additional micro tune adjustments. It is a bit more expensive. I want to say it's run, retailing for about like 370, 380 right now. It's, it's sold through the Born and Raised website, um, but it actually just has a very simple little bracket. So for you guys that like to run your sites very close to your riser like I do, um, that's another great option. It's very robust. It's going to be more lightweight than, and keep the sight closer to the riser than, um, than any of the other models out there, but it does cost a bit more money. Um, as far as where else to purchase these sites, the knock-on edition sites can be purchased right through the knock-on website. The standard fast eddies, uh, there's a number of different online retailers that have them. Uh, I've purchased mine in the past from Lancaster Archery. They usually are back ordered, but uh, in the past, at least from my experience, it's typically about a month that they're back ordered and they're pretty good about, uh, Spot Hot's pretty good about pumping those out and making sure they get into their distributor's hands. Uh, quicker. I can't recommend these sites enough. There are other good quality sites out there. Now, once you get into that $250 and up price point, uh, you know, it's just like Bose. You're dealing with high-end models. You're dealing with companies that know what they're doing. They're, they all may have their quirks and different uh, eccentricities, but you know, you're not, you're probably not going to regret your purchase either way. One thing I would highly encourage you to make sure you check on any site that you pick up is the pins. Make sure that your the pins are robust. That's one thing Spot Hog, Black Gold, HHA are all known for, is very robust pins. You don't wanna be walking to your stand or walking through the woods and have to worry about weeds getting in there and pulling your fiber optics out of your pins. That is an absolute nightmare. And there are high-end sites that do have weaknesses in that area. Another good option that I haven't mentioned yet is also the CVE. I did run that site uh, first part of the, the season last year. Great site as well. Uh, again, they all have their little quirks. Check them out, weigh your options, figure out what's gonna work best for you. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you guys next time. This is AJ and I am out.